Look at all these bass. All these bass just in the creek back here. What? What up, y'all? Welcome back to another episode on the Weston Smith channel. Today is gonna be slightly epic, as long as the thunderstorms don't kick in, man. It's overcast, there's a little bit of sprinkles on the windshield right now, but guess what? We are at Guitar Center. Woo! Throw you for a loop real quick. I actually gotta get a new head for my snare drum, because you can see I smacked it a couple times a little too hard, I guess. So, yeah, gotta get a new head for the snare drum, and then we are gonna be on our way to the spot. I think we're gonna be uh, fishing with pond boys tonight. So. I got a bunch of different stuff to throw, man. I got a big swim bait, I got a frog, I got a fluke, and I got a finesse rod. I actually have another top water as well, but we'll talk about that later. Let's get in here, see what we can't find for the old snare, start playing some more drums again, because I've been out for like a week because of this. Not acceptable. Anyways, let's step inside Guitar Center and see what they got for us. Dudes, got us hooked up with the Remo Emperor head for the thing. Check that out. Looks better than it did. I'm gonna let that thing tighten up. I'm gonna go meet up with Torrance now at the ponds. I think he's already there, so we'll catch you all in a minute at the water. All right, guys, here's what we've got going. I feel like the bite is gonna be a little finicky today, despite the awesome overcast conditions, because yesterday was a terrible storm. I bet you this water is chalked up a little bit more than normal. Torrance is about to beat me here, but what I've got is the big old swim bait, man. I'm gonna creep it low and slow, see if I can't actually get a big to uh, link up. Look, man, this thing's been getting bites. A huge swim bait, working class zero. I got a fish on the big bait, dude. Oh my gosh, no way. Battle Shad 7.5, guys. I also am going to have in my backpack another rod, another bait caster, actually, with a weightless Texas rig set up on a 4 aught hook with a fluke. I've got Ice White Zoom Salty Super Flukes. This actually has caught my PB of 6.65 pounds right here. So I'm going to show you guys how to work the fluke a little bit if we break it out. Also, Dark Sleeper may decide to tie him on just for something a little bit different, kind of swim him or even pop him along the bottom. It's got that hook that's kind of hidden inside the top fin. Kind of gets good for going in the cover. Also, since I do have the weightless Texas rig, I got a couple worms, man. Lunker logs and a dark color since I believe it is stained more than usual. And also I've got some larger slim shakes and a natural color. Let's get to the water. By the way, we're fishing a, uh, a golf course, and I did see some guys on the green when we got here, so I don't know, we might uh, we might make some friends on the golf course. Ah, GoPro. Come on, Weston, you make YouTube videos. What is this, first day? Line cutters, pliers, scale, plastics, one extra rod, all in the backpack, man. GoPro batteries, let's get it going. A fish or a lure? Uh, a lure, yes sir. You're after the big one, don't you? Yeah, I caught a couple on this one recently, so I'm pretty excited to throw it here. I'm gonna wait for these golfers to tee off here and then I will run up behind them, but I'm gonna toss in this little creek here. I'm gonna switch things up to a lunker log while I throw right here. Uh, it, is, it is quite stained. I don't know if I'll be throwing that fluke around as much as I had thought. This place was very clear the last time I had been around, but it's all chalked up from the storm as I mentioned. So let me toss a little weightless Sanko in here. I really would prefer a, a rod with a faster tip. This one's got a little bit slower tip I like it for working that fluke, but we'll be just fine. See what we got in the back 40 over here. It doesn't seem to be anything back here. I think I'm gonna take it to where the kind of opens up to the mouth right there. Throw the lunker log in there for just a second. Then I'm gonna break out the swim bait and start walking the bank. Been watching that tactical bass and man, they're saying after these temps get cool, these overnight temps get cool, these fish are gonna start to feed up. Summer to fall transition. They didn't really talk about big swim baits, but they talked about reaction baits, moving baits, and uh, so regardless, see if I can't swoosh by one right here on this bad boy. We had a couple cool nights in a row now. See if they're on a little bit different of a pattern. Oh, thought I had a bite, but I think that was just my imagination. All right, yeah, we're getting out here. A little bit more chop. Now I'm thinking, put this weightless Senko away for a moment. Give some time to the battle shad. We're gonna try and catch a hog out of this pond here, man. I know last time I was here, I was catching them they were like on bed still, I think. It's been a while since I've hit this uh, golf course spot. And what I was gonna say is, I had like a five pounder I was working for a little while, so I know there's some decent fish out here. There could definitely be some bigs. Looks like Torrance is pulling up by the STI right now, man. All right, we about to have some fun. It's uh, five o'clock too, so I think we got three hours before sunset. You know, there's enough stain on this water today and enough chop at the moment. A spinner bait would probably be ideal. I'm sure Torrance has got that one covered. 
this fluke, I should probably not even be casting it out as deep. Probably just kind of work the bank a little bit. See if I can't find something that wants to munch out here in the shallows where a lot of the bait fish hang out. It's not going to sink too fast, so there we go. Let that sink a little bit, start working it. Always want to pop it on slack line so it's got the erratic movement. Don't want to necessarily reel every little bit of slack in. And a lot of times, the water's not clear here, but in the clear water, you'll just see the strikes because this thing stays just subsurface. I mean, it's so cool. And you just swing on them. But today, it's probably gonna be a case where I don't see it or maybe even feel it if they don't run with it away from me because I have a little bit of slack out to work it properly. And so what happens is you go for that next pop and you kind of feel more resistance and then you just smack it. This is why you pick your stuff up, guys. Look at this, fishermen. Pick up hooks, lines, sinkers, trash. And it says one duck was killed with the date on here after swallowing hook and line. So guys, make sure you're picking up all your stuff. I don't see signs like that often enough, but I do see a lot of hooks, line, baits, bags just left out man so all you gotta do is put it back in your tackle bag and recycle it throw it in the, whatever you do just don't leave it at the local ponds and lakes that's no bueno starting to think about that tackle box in the car wonder if i need to go get a weight and throw a texas rig out deep i brought the finesse gear too don't make me go get the drop shot Ooh, we tear them up on the drop shot uh, i don't think anything's up feeding by the bank at the moment y'all let's go back to the sanko always tough to judge what the fish gonna be up to after a storm in our area sometimes they go up shallow and try and feed with the rising water sometimes they uh, stay out deep and don't want to do anything that is what's most frequent with the storms out here you get a storm in texas they turn off on these ponds by the way the boat's still getting service we don't have it back otherwise we're probably going to be doing some more lake stuff looking forward to when we get that boat back here shortly <sighs> we're gonna have to play the slow game today speaking of slow torrance is still doing something over at his car he is literally taking all kinds of instagram stories or something i mean i walked half this bank Dang, you bringing out everything. All right, good. Good, because they ain't hit the fluke or the lunker log yet. Weightless. Here, check out the new setup. Throw this out there for a couple casts while I make this run. Oh, this is right here, dude. I love, I love me some. That thing's so sick. <laughs> oh, man, we got to go grab the top water. Torrance not going to be out here for a minute, so watch him catch a big old fish on the battle shed. Where's that blow up? It only takes one. Yeah, but this is a good bait to almost learn how to walk with. Guys, if y'all haven't picked up one of these Yoziris, Carl's Bait and Tackle Man, check the thing out. I just got this one recently in a mystery tackle box, actually. And uh, I am really digging this thing. It's got a nice pop to it. Just a walking pencil bait. The thing is dope. And uh, like I just mentioned to Torrance, I feel like you can learn how to walk a bait really easily with this right here, which is kind of going side to side, right? Almost just get a consistent reel as you're making those little pops and it goes doink, 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 doink. And so uh, if you're trying to learn how to walk those frogs, maybe start with something like this just to make it a little bit easier on yourself. You get it down, get that confidence going, then you break out that frog and you get the boom blow ups, man. On to pond number two, man. Stained as ever, but check this place out. I just cast it way out there to that aerator. Seeing if we can't put a little something, something together. Oh, we on the green. We're about to make a move, y'all. I don't like chocolate milk. You know, if I had the chatterbait, I would have already caught four. Everything's in the car. Yep, it's that tackle box. It's missing, man. I'm over here trying to throw weightless Sankos and water they can't, <laughs> water they can't even see. <laughs> Bam, shad chatterbait. You fish the stained water, the chocolate milk. This is a good go-to right here. Bright color, blade to cause a lot of vibration. Saucy swimmer with a good kick. Probably one of the best ways to try and get a fish out of this place tonight. Well, I know where I'm casting and what is the most casted at spot in this entire place. Countless bobbers and fishing line on this thing. <laughs> when you hit a new pond, you go for the structure. I just realized I fished this pond before. It was one of my earlier fishing vlogs I fished here. Yeah, change it up. You can't edit it after you promote it. Sometimes the text in the photo makes it reach less people whenever you go to promote it. I talk about that every once in a while, but oh, yeah. sometimes the promotions like will pin for approval longer or it will say like you'll reach less people because there's text in the photo. Uh, so the money doesn't go as far, but I'm not saying that's, you know, you learn. No, I wouldn't promote it for like a day or two, like let it run and see what kind of results it gets by itself. I mean, I would promote it to your story every day and talk about when it ends. Now there's a, there's a bass right here. Hey, there's two bass right here. Three bass right here, bro three little bass up here guys i'm gonna try and get them with the dark sleeper tie something on looks a little bit more realistic they weren't liking that shad chatter bait they are nestled away back here in the clear water oh they're all about that dark sleeper life <laughs> got a fish man i watched him chase it too i was just popping it a little bit right in front of him that was funny all right first fish of the night just had to cast into the back 40 to get him to show himself see you buddy 
That's how you do it after a thunderstorm right there. Gotta head back to the creek to find the babies. There is like a pound and a half to two pounder in here. Now I wish I had my polarized glasses. I didn't even bring them back here. We could go grab the weightless Sankos and polarized glasses and get all six of these back here. Might be a one and done type of evening, y'all. This is why we don't fish after no thunderstorms out here in DFW. Damn, look at those two decent ones right there. You see them, right? Holy shit. Right where you were just casting. And look, there's there's two more in that little cut with the grass. Oh, wow. I told you there was like six back there, dude. Look, they're all cruising. Look, there's three. You were right over those two. I wonder if there's even more like back here. Like right there, right on the bank. He's nosed up to us. Oh, there's two. There's three. Oh, he's on it. He's, oh, I just had one, dude. There's like four on it. Oh, did you see that? That was nuts. Dude, we almost had a big one went after it. They're in this thing. Look, there's like seven. We are about to knock these things out. Game over. He's eating it. Oh, it's competition, dude. There's like seven bass. All right. Guys, it's going down to the back of the creek right here. There's like 10 fish in here. Look at how many fish there are. 15 fish right there. Oh my God. Oh no. <laughs> Look, one's going to go in for the kill. They're all, They're all looking at it. <laughs> I'm about to catch all these. Y'all, here I am trying to make another last cast. Look at this. My bait's in here. Look at it's snagged. Look at all these bass. All these bass just in the creek back here. What? Biggins on it. Got him. Got him. Got him. Come on, boy. Get, get out of the creek, buddy. Turned into an epic evening sesh. <laughs> you might need to bring that top water down here. They might fight for it. Mission success. Here, this guy hasn't even seen it before. Oh, God. He ran it from a mile away. <gasps> Got him. Got him, boy. Oh, oh. Uh-oh. That's not good. Dude, I don't even know if I can jump over here. Woo there he is. Gotta save this fish's life. Holy crap, I just like flung him out of the wood. Woodworks. Got him. All right, sorry, bud. Get in there. Jeez Louise. Saving the fish's life. Holy crap. Okay, well, that was an epic little way to end today's episode. I don't even know if I can get back out of here. This is like sinking sand. All right, man, sun setting. Evening bite. Ended up taking a turn as we found all of them back here in the creek. Catch up with you guys back in the car. Before we go, I want uh, Torrance to tell you guys a little bit about his setup on top of his rig. Because you guys know, we recently took some stuff off to put on top of the kayak trailer. But you're rocking a whole different setup. Let me see what you guys... Oh yeah, so we have the big catch and then we have the real deal on here. Yeah. Real deal is so freaking clutch, man. So this guy right here, um, so I just lift these up. It actually has a lock in here. So we have the real deal right here. I love this thing because I was getting so tired of putting my rods in my car. Because you know, you have to put them in here, bend them down. And you can hear that clicking and clacking all the freaking time, man. That thing was so annoying. And you cringe because you know that you either messed up a rod, you either bend an eye or blah, 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 blah. So a really cool thing about this guy is you can put up to, I think it's like, I can get seven rods on here if I really squeeze them. Like, look at that. I can put another three rods right there with no problem. This right here is really flexible. I can put my paddle and my uh, power pole on top of here as well. So when I put it down, look how soft that is. Like these aren't gonna move anywhere, man. I've gone over hundred miles per hour. Don't tell my family. Flexible rubber. It's not gonna scratch anything and it's also kind of grippy. So these aren't gonna move left and right with no problem. That's dope, man. So you guys have seen the big catch on mine as well where we put the kayak on top of there and we actually have the bona fide on top of the trailer utilizing this piece right here. But, uh, dude, Yakima's got us hooked up. You can see Pond Boys has chosen the silver crossbars, and ours are all blacked out. So you got a lot of options. You guys can really customize these. Cater to your needs if you want to get into some Yakima roof rack systems for your own whip. I just want to show you guys a couple things on top of Torrance's rig. Also, uh, a really big thing about this is I didn't know that I could get this roof rack. Um, on this car because I have a completely naked roof. So when I went online, I typed in my information, the year, make, and model of the car, and they told me exactly what I needed for my car. So all these pieces are actually separate. This comes separate, this comes separate, and then this comes separate. And then obviously the big catch comes separate. But having a naked roof and having a roof rack on there makes my car look nice, and it puts me back in the game with putting my kayak on the roof. So that's my, that's my deal on that, and that's just my honest opinion. I freaking love this thing, and it completely changed fishing for me. Super sick, man. So ours was actually the same deal. Check us out. We had what you'd call a naked roof, meaning there was no like bars on top of the car to begin with from the factory. And so literally you just get those pieces, like he was saying, that go right inside the car door. And then you also get these mounts and you can choose your crossbars from Yakima. 
and they'll get you hooked up with anything you want to accessorize the top of your vehicles, man. So we're just showing you a couple of the fishing related items we've got on our rides and uh, that's gonna close it out, man. I hope you all enjoyed this little session that ended up turning into a creek domination. Sleep, dark sleeping, fish catching ordeal. Hope you guys enjoyed it. Go check out Palm Boys on Instagram. Peace out. <gasps>